I assume you got him? Ooh, safe and so. Oh. Ain't that right, buddy? <laughs> hey, my bad, homie. I pick C. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're not serving up a three-course meal. No entree, no main. It's just desserts. I'm so unbelievably proud of that joke. This is the 10 most satisfying kills in GTA games. Before we continue, we publish content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified of our latest videos. Catalina. You want some fatso? You big stick of Yankee shit. Beast? I sing f units with more balls than you. <laughs> <laughs> Has there been another character in gaming history that you've wanted to drop a big fat just shut up to more than Catalina? Answers below. Catalina made her debut in Grand Theft Auto 3, and although still pretty damn annoying, it was her betrayal of our protagonist Claude, coupled with our campaign being entirely about finding and killing her, that made her eventual demise oh so satisfying. Now, should the player decide to play Grand Theft Auto San Andreas first, they're gonna be treated to the worst version of Catalina, as her grating voice, unhinged nature, and annoying missions make her less satisfying than a nail in your foot. I read it in books, I hear it in music, do all the same, f this, that, well, f you. Eddie Pulaski. Man, I've been busy. I've been burying my moms, man. Sounds like a excuse to me. Officer Pulaski thinks you're trying to screw with us, Carl. Here's the thing. When you have an evil protagonist who constantly beats you at every turn, constantly one-ups you, and constantly berates and belittles you, you begin to harbor a natural hatred towards them. Now, imagine they have an annoying cyst growing out of their side that just repeats, yeah. That's Eddie Pulaski. Officer Tenpenny pushes and prods our protagonist CJ all throughout the game, but Eddie is just an accompanied dead. Being there for almost all of these awful moments whilst adding his own little swipes at CJ on top makes Eddie seem like the sidekick bully, and often kicking his ass is twice as satisfying as kicking the bully's ass. <coughs> yeah, well, them's the breaks. Any last request? Yeah. <laughs> Vlad. Whatever you say. I thought you were going to marry me, hey, baby. Vlad. Hey, Vlad. Great. You're fucking crazy, man. You should lose few pounds. Otherwise, this beautiful lady is going to lose. I know. Things aren't so great when we arrive in Liberty City. Roman, our protagonist's cousin, lied about how well off he was. And instead of a mansion and many beautiful girls, we are met with a dirty apartment and one ugly cousin. To cement things as terrible, we learn that Roman is being hounded by a loan shark. This loan shark turns out to be our first active antagonist, Vlad. Vlad is as piggish as a man can get with zero, and we really mean zero redeeming qualities. He is brash, unpredictable, and predatory. He abuses our Roman in front of the player and eventually sleeps with his girlfriend. Chasing down and eventually killing Vlad feels almost like the end of a prologue and the beginning of your journey and the satisfaction in realizing that Nico can quite easily shut a monster up is very satisfying. Half bitch is a small place. My friends will find you. Ryder. That does it. That's game null and void, motherfucker. So, uh, what kind of guns we working with now? One times came through, raid the spot. We ain't got shit now. Well, what you gonna do if the ballers roll through? Throw shoes at him? Ryder from GTA San Andreas provides a good amount of comic relief in the early parts of the game, but that doesn't change the fact that he needs a good swift punch to the penis. Ryder seems to oppose everything we stand for, getting drugs off the streets and reuniting the families. He is lazy, bad-mannered, immature, and eventually a backstabbing hypocrite. After Ryder joins up with Smash and the Barlers, we cut all contact with him and realize that what initially felt like banter may have actually been negativity. Adding Ryder to our hit list, we eventually track him down, make him run, and blow his ass up, finally giving him the comeback we'd wish we'd thought of in the first chapter of the game. Ray Bulgarin. Ray Bulgarin is a stock standard, ruthless, and amoral criminal. Among his worst deeds include human trafficking, notably involving protagonist Nico Bellic's backstory, where he forces Nico into his service under threat of harm to his family. Extremely violent and happy to order deaths on people who only slightly cross him, he engages in drug trafficking and arms dealing, contributing to widespread violence and crime in Liberty City. Bulgarin's character epitomizes the darkest aspects of organized crime, so when we finally get the chance to drop him, it feels uh, so good. 
having to wait till a DLC to come back to this character's demise adds an extra layer of mm, deliciousness after we're forced to wait. Ray Bolgarin's death is a finger licking good. There's no connection between him and KFC. I just felt like saying that for some reason. I'm very sick. Moving on. I'll take my chances. Eddie Lowe. You should get laid or something. Oh, I just did. A little jogger down by the water. But you know what, handsome? I got a hunger tonight that can't be sated. Come here. Huh. Eddie gives off heavy serial killer energy as he lures some victims in with promises of friendship before brutally torturing and eventually killing them. Tell me you wouldn't punch Ted Bundy in the neck if you got a chance. Damn right. Eddie Lowe takes pleasure in torturing his victims, often mutilating their corpses and keeping trophies as souvenirs of his crimes. He stalks the streets of Liberty City, preying on unsuspecting individuals, instilling fear and paranoia in the community. His sadistic nature and lack of remorse make him one of the most unsettling and reprehensible characters in the game's universe. His death, an absolute joy for the player. Lance Vance. I might just do that. The name's Lance, by the way. Tommy Versetti. Let's go. I'm sure everybody knows somebody in their life who's friends with everyone and enemies of them all the same. Talking smack about their other friends to you whilst talking smack about you with their other friends, strolling through life with a smug smile and sense of invincibility. Wouldn't you just love to run them down with your car? No? Just me? Lance Vance carries himself with a cool vibe, quickly becoming one of your closest confidants. So when he eventually betrays you, it brings down the veil of the cool vibe, revealing a much more malicious personality that the player couldn't previously see. His death is well-deserved and being the one to pull the trigger is obviously so damn satisfying. Pick the wrong side, Lance. Devin Weston. But you, you I don't know. Yeah, well, until I see reason otherwise, why don't we just keep it that way? Steve, what a pleasure, bro. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> to be a very good friend of Steve Haynes means you've got to be a pretty massive piece of garbage. From his initial introduction, where he's seen leaving a torture victim like he just had a round of golf, to his offer to Franklin to kill his only friends, Devin carries himself through some of the most evil acts with a confidence only deserving of a man with no moral compass. Devin plays us throughout the majority of the campaign, and when we finally strip the man down, literally, and show him for the fragile human he is, we enjoy one of the most satisfying kills in the entire series. Go to hell, you massive poo. Ah! <sighs> Dmitry Raskolov. <laughs> we had to gag him to stop the screaming. Dmitry Raskolov is a weasel of a man. He operates from the shadows of evil, initially presenting as a decent guy. We don't have time to get into the depths of his acts, so let's just mention his worst. He orders the killing of Roman. Admittedly, chasing him down in a rage and watching him die brutally after killing your cousin is quite satisfying for that exact reason. He killed your cousin. But it's the other death, should the player have made different choices throughout the game, that is the most tasty. After killing Nico's girlfriend Kate as opposed to Roman, we embark on a different mission that allows us to watch Dimitri beg and pull the trigger ourselves. Shoot his face, shoot his balls, shoot his foot 600 times, whatever you want, go for it, big boy. Officer Tenpenny. Welcome home, Carl. Glad to be back. As easily the best antagonist in Grand Theft Auto history, Officer Tenpenny makes sure that we never get a win. Across this surprisingly long campaign filled with ups and downs, Tenpenny always manages to best us in every interaction and every encounter. He's responsible for almost every terrible thing that has happened to CJ from well before the beginning of the game and has an added layer of insult as some speculate he turned on and benefits from perpetuating the downfall of his community. When the time finally arrives, putting an end to this evil man proves to not only be the most satisfying death in the whole game, but possibly the whole series. See you around, officer. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Mojo Plays and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of our latest videos.